Hey folks, today I'm going to teach you how to use my favorite new features in Mac OS Sonoma. That's coming up next on Tech Talk America. I want to start by showing you one of my favorite features in Mac OS Sonoma. Those of us who have been longtime Apple fans have come to expect new wallpaper options and occasionally new screensavers with each version of the Mac operating system. The ones that you'll find in macOS Sonoma take things to a brand new level. For starters, if you go to System Settings and click on Wallpaper, you'll find several new categories including Landscape, Cityscape, Underwater, Earth, Shuffle Options, and finally a category called Pictures that has a collection of images from past operating systems as well as some abstract imagery. I'd also like to point out that if you slide this button here at the top, you can make any of these videos available as screensavers. In doing my research for this tutorial, I watched every one of these video backgrounds, and I have to say, I am blown away by a combination of the quality and the compression. For example, this is the wallpaper shot of Yosemite, which I'm speeding up, but this shot lasts eight minutes and 44 seconds long, one shot. When we go into the library files and pull up the info, it only takes up 854 megabytes. That's pretty incredible compression. So check this out. When your Mac is on the lock screen, or if it goes to the screensaver, the video begins to play. But when you log in with your password, it gracefully slows to a stop, the dock and widgets appear, and if you have files or folders on your desktop, if you're one of those e-hoarder types, those pop up too. The next new feature is desktop widgets. You can now drag widgets from Notification Center directly onto your desktop where they'll remain visible even after Notification Center is dismissed. You can also secondary click on the desktop to reveal an option to edit widgets. These come in several different sizes so they can display different amounts of information. And they're even interactive. So if you have a to-do list and you check off an item, it will disappear without launching the Reminders app. In my humble opinion, one of the most useful features in macOS Sonoma is you can finally have family shared passwords. You will find this feature in the settings of Safari and here under the password tab is where you can add additional users and choose which passwords to share. While we're here in Safari, let's talk about some of the other changes, which include the ability to have different profiles. For example, you could have one set of bookmarks, extensions and preferences for work, and then another for when you're relaxing at home. Another noteworthy addition in Safari is the ability to create web apps. This feature allows you to turn websites into standalone apps that reside in the dock. To do this, go to a website and then navigate to File and select Add to Dock. Once launched, these web apps appear as separate entities distinct from your main Safari window. They offer a focused browsing experience and you can switch between them and the regular version of Safari effortlessly. One of the most popular uses for the Reminders app is to use it as a grocery list. Well, now you can identify your groceries as a grocery list and it will automatically organize those items by type. To do that, just secondary click on the list and then click on Show List Info. Here where it says List Type, switch it to Grocery. Now, if we switch back to my grocery list, you can see how I can now swipe through this list and the items that are likely to be found in the same aisle are now grouped together. One of the things I admire most about Apple is how they empower the disabled community through their accessibility features. One of the features that is not yet available in the beta of macOS Sonoma, but is available in the beta of iOS 17 is a feature called Personal Voice. This feature is invaluable to anyone who has been recently diagnosed with ALS, as well as other conditions that affect the vocal cords. Here's how personal voice works. It starts by having you read 15 minutes of random sentences into the microphone. After that, it takes quite a bit of time for it to process the data, but when it's done, it creates a vocal clone of your voice. I'm not 100% certain how exactly you will be able to access that feature on the Mac, but on the iPhone, the way that you get to it is you triple click the side button, which reveals a keyboard. Then just type whatever it is you want to say, and when you tap send, it plays the audio in your simulated voice. 
So at this point, I'm gonna play for you my personal voice. Uh, one quick thing, uh, so when I set this up, I was dealing with a little bit of a cold, and the funny thing is, as a result, my vocal clone sounds like it has a cold too. Sorry, boss, but I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Better get some rest and drink lots of fluids. You know, it is actually kind of a genius idea. You could technically set up two personal voices, one for when you're well and one for when you're feeling like and that way, anytime you need to call in a sick, just switch over to the sick voice and there you go. There are a few new features in regards to PDFs. For example, you can now fill out PDFs faster than ever before in Preview. That's because Preview now auto detects different fields and it even allows you to use your contact info to auto fill the form. You can also now save PDFs directly into the Notes app. Those are many of the newest features in macOS Sonoma. Like I said, there are a few more that I can't demo for you well, at least not today. For example, the journal app, as well as the reactions feature in FaceTime. But stay tuned, we'll cover more as more betas drop. Let me know which of these features was your favorite down below in the comment section. And overall, what's your general impression of macOS Sonoma? Thank you so much for watching everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.